Hello guys, this is a review of the movie Call Me By Your Name released last year. It is also a brief analysis of it. Now, this movie I just had a chance to watch yesterday. Here is the ticket. It is based on a novel of the same name, released in 2007 by writer Andre Osimhen. And um, in the description, I will leave the details about who the director, the producers, and secondary actors were. I don't mean to discredit them, it's just a very long list, and I want to get to the point. Um, this movie is set in Italy, and it's about a 17-year-old boy named Elio. Elio is played by Timothy Chalamet. He, he's quite comfortable. You know, this family has people serving for them. They are involved with... With their community, everybody is involved with each other in the sense that it's not a very, you know, separatist community. Everybody is it's like one very um, uniting feel the movie has, in my opinion. And um, they accept a student to help with Elio's father's work. He's... 26 I believe and his name is Oliver played by Army Hammer and everything seems to go well like I just said it was a very um, well-treated family the parents seem to be quite supportive informed educated and very um, encouraging with Elio and um, not long after the arrival of Oliver, Elio starts realizing that he's developing feelings for him and vice versa. And you can imagine why in the year 1983, in which this movie is, um, is set, how that would be a problem. But let me talk about so many things. The acting in this movie is spectacular. Um, not for one minute did I doubt their um, their acting, whatever they were doing, whether it be playing around or making sculpture discoveries, studying, um, engaging in community activities. Now, for one minute did I doubt that they were in that situation. It is very, very, very well acted film. And when you hear the name of the actors and it, you know, I don't need to, to really highlight why they are very good at what they do. I'm pretty sure they're going to be nominated for very prestigious acting awards. They should. Um, the scenery is amazing. Italy is so beautiful. The architecture is... It's very pleasant to watch, even even if it's not in person. Through the screen, it, they made a very, very good job directing and capturing um, those buildings, and not just the buildings, but the landscapes, the natural landscapes. There are very beautiful lakes, and um, I just wish I, I could submerge myself in them like that's how good they look they look amazing i have not seen a movie in years with that um quality of of scenery and um i guess you know movie makers don't really have the ability to make a a place beautiful it either is or it isn't unless they're working with sets inside a studio but um, in this case, they don't need much of like crystals or, or gold, you know. Natural scenery is already beautiful. It's already done. I really doubt that they enhanced it in any sort of way. Looks very natural to me. And the whole movie is also very natural. has a very um, organic feel to it. There aren't many special effects. There are a few, but they fit in perfectly. A few, you know, overlaps of, how do you say that, retro effect when, um, like, say they're filming me and then it starts to show, like, the, the um, very old tape um, recorder and flashes and color changes, that type of thing. 
it's in a particular scene where Timothy Timothy's character Elio is mourning well not mourning but very very sad for the the absence of Oliver the temp temporary absence of Oliver he does not leave um yes what's the next <laughs> what's the next point there are so many points in this movie I really can't keep track um one of the negative aspects of the movie I must say is that this is um and for everyone watching this is is a uh, um a romance movie involving um two men so if that is not what you are comfortable seeing then dismiss this movie right away i would advise you not to but um if you are just not willing to to give um these type of movies a try then then don't because this goes all out and that's one of the negative aspects of it it's not that i have intolerance to um display of sexuality in gay or lesbian films but rather the overuse of of sensuality and nudity i think it derails the attention from the points of the film and the essence that it carries from the opening shot to the ending ending scene in the film um what can I say? Um, it doesn't take a genius to know that this film is an, um, is a gay movie. And I hate, you know, labeling things, but we have to label things so we know what we're talking about. Um, from like the opening scene, you kind of relax, hmm, like the camera's panning a little bit, a little bit too much um, on Elio. And it does so throughout the film, also Oliver. And um, but it's not just um, focused solely on their relationship, as as it is in real life. You know, they also have a lot of heterosexual relationships. Elio is kind of seeing this girl who he's very interested in sleeping with, but not much more than that. And she's interested in him fully romantically you know but um yeah i guess you know where this is going the the whole pretend game and and just wanting to to have sex and kind of forget about it and the girl's like too into it and oliver on his part and these are spoilers by the way um, I think I'm gonna take out the whole no spoilers thing because when you don't talk about spoilers and you can't really analyze a film, you can't really review it um, to the best of your ability, you have to leave out a lot of very interesting details, which I do not wish to do any further, so any longer. So spoilers ahead. And I'm also gonna mention in the detail. Oliver does not mention that he, he has actually um, a girlfriend. He, towards the end of the film, he says, oh, we were on and off during a phone call. But at the end of the day, he, he um, he's engaged. He's going to marry her. And this is so heartbreaking. Because how am I going to describe to you what the movie is about? You have to see it. Because because this isn't like a blockbuster film with um, Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt and all bam 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 boom 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 and he kills her and he comes here. You just have to live it. It's everyday scenarios, everyday situations with everyday people doing everyday things. There's nothing too fantastic about it in that sense. Not that the film is not fantastic but the situations and what they find themselves is very complicated but very real. You know, very 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 real. Elio and Oliver, at first Elio is not very receptive towards Oliver's attention or anything at all. He kind of dislikes him in a way, but I think it's more his fear of the attraction that he's developing for him, even from the beginning. But as they do engage in, in um, little trips here and there, you know, talking about this, talking about that, they do start to accept the feelings that they have for each other and the display um they start displaying their affection 
in very concrete ways. And I'm going to go back to what I mentioned before. I think they did overdo it. I actually read an article earlier today that said that the LGBT community was very enraged at the fact that they did not focus too much on the sex in between Elio and Oliver, but they did so with the heterosexual encounter that Elio has with his girlfriend. Um, and I, I don't think so, actually. I actually think they did a very good job. During the scene in which he first has sex, Elio with Oliver, the camera switches over to a tree by the window, and I thought that was amazing. You don't have to literally show porn for the film to be, you know, daring and um, eye-opening. That was very beautiful, very magical, because in reality, when you're doing whatever it is you're doing, whether it be, you know, that or eating or whatever, usually look out a window. And what do you see? You see trees most of the time. So that was, for me, that was very real. It's as if I was there and like I shouldn't be there. But um, I still couldn't stop watching when they, the camera turns over to, to a tree. And that's just my opinion. I think they kind of overdid it. Not, and it was very visually... Um, Mm. beautiful it was definitely very 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 erotic very but like i say it's just you know the distraction that i have a problem with the distraction from the point of the film the acting from all the the other actors was just you know stellar amazing the dad was there's a scene in the end that you know since I was not so so much drawn into their feelings, I wasn't like crying about it. But if I was, then I know that I would have. And this might seem ridiculous to say or redundant to mention. But um, if you do get drawn into it from the beginning, then there's no doubt that that scene is going to touch your heart because it was just beautiful. And I could accept it even though I didn't, you know, feel it 100%. More like, you know, like an 80%. The father's like, you know what? I know what you two had. I know that it was more than a friendship. I don't know if I'm crossing the line here telling you about this. He's telling his son. And he's like, no, no, no. It's fine. So he continues. He was like, I've never had that type of encounter, that type of love. So you are very fortunate to have felt that, to have experienced that. And do not feel shame. What you do with your life is your business. And it's very, very true. I know some millions of people out there wish that they had a parent or a family member or anyone at all who would um, say that to them and really support them and blindly love them. Not blindly in the sense that, oh, you're gonna go and kill um, 29 people and I'm gonna applaud and love you, you know? It's not that type of thing that's ridiculous. But I mean, in something as simple and as beautiful as just loving, you know? Being open to loving who you, who your heart um, really tells you is, is for you. And this father, his support is just beautiful in the film. It says, um, that's a real good treat um, near the end. That's what the movie's about, what I just mentioned. And then you know how I mentioned that um, Oliver becomes engaged well after the six weeks that he's there he goes back to america and he gives him a phone call and elio is very excited logically to receive that phone call and then he's kind of you know back to his sadness when he hears about this but it doesn't mark um how can i say this it doesn't enrage him like he doesn't have like a temper tantrum or something like that it does break him i'm sure but he handles it with maturity and i hate that word but that's what it is. He handles it with maturity. They all handle it with maturity. Oliver speaks with with Elio's parents, and they're like, "Oh yeah, yeah, this. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. I'm getting engaged. Oh, congratulations! Everything like that." Then it ends, and Elio tells Oliver, "You know, they know about us." He's like, "Yeah, I know because your father spoke to me," and <laughs> he's like, "You're very lucky to have such wonderful parents," and he is. And the movie, I describe, the way I describe it and the way I, you know, I'm reviewing it, it sounds so simple, so easy, but it's, it's a beautiful film. 
I think you should definitely give it a try. I give it a a 9 out of 10 in its category. It's amazing. Personally, I couldn't, like I said, I couldn't get fully engaged, but it doesn't take away anything from the film. The film is just beautiful. It's always a treat. I'm definitely buying it when it comes out on theaters. <laughs> when it comes out on DVD, I just watch it on theaters. Pardon me. And, um, yes, I believe that's it for this one. Call me by your name. Make sure to give it a try. And thank you for watching.